Hello and welcome to the Purdue Orbital call-out recording. Unfortunately, there were technical difficulties when recording our call-out for the first time, so I am here to voice over our slides and talk about the different opportunities that we have at Purdue Orbital. My name is Trey Taylor. I'm the president for 2024-2025, and this is Purdue Orbital. First, a little bit about us. Our mission is to foster technical and professional skills of all members by designing, building, and testing innovative solutions to complex problems in the aerospace industry. Now, what does that really mean? Our mission is developing our technology and our people. We want to give all of our members the most valuable experience that they can have while they are still at college, while giving them the technical skills that they need to go out and innovate in the aerospace industry. So, a little bit about our statistics. We are about 100 or so members um, from many different colleges, including AAE, ME, ECE, et cetera. We have had about $300 in cumulative funding since 2016, and with that, we have done over 25 test flights. Um, we actually have reached uh, altitude with rockets of over 25,000 feet, and with altitude balloons, we have gone to upwards of 100,000 feet. Okay, so our club is split into two major programs. First is the HAPSIS program, which I'll go over now, and then I will talk about the Icarus program. Our HAPSIS program revolves around the high altitude balloon air launched rocket concept. What does that mean? Well, by launching rockets off of high altitude balloons, we can gain significant altitude advantages, not only from the balloon height, but also from the lower atmospheric density that the balloon allows us to launch, or launch at. This is the original focus of our club. And since then, we have done a lot of prototyping and design development to make this more of a feasible reality. Um, the principle of HAPSIS is doing things faster, rapid prototyping, more manufacturing, um, doing things with commercial off-the-shelf components. Now we're focused more on full-scale air launches. We're planning to um, complete a mission called HAPSIS-2 in spring of 2025, which will take place in the Mojave Desert, and that will be a rocket launched off of a high-altitude balloon um, at such an altitude where the difference in altitude from the rocket launch will be greater than if it were launched from the ground. Additionally, we're completing a um, test demonstration this fall of an integrated high altitude balloon launch, which will include all of the components from our unfortunately failed HAPSIS-1 we attempted in the spring, but without a rocket motor. That will take place in Indiana. Now, the vision for the HAPSIS program is, well, first of all, launching from the ground requires huge rockets to make it to space. These rockets are often costly, hard to develop, and require um, very advanced propulsion systems. Our solution to this is air launching a rocket that could be easier to make the Kármán line. Particularly, we're currently focused in, uh, we're focusing on suborbital flight. We want to make suborbital flight more accessible. We want to get microgravity time for research and smaller scale payloads. And we think that our platform may be a possible architecture to do that. So right now we're developing this technology um, where we're actually going out and we're going to do some of these launches and we're going to validate this design is possible and that we can achieve it. We plan to make space and push past the Kármán line uh, within a few years. So that's our current goal is we want to make a space shot. And so we're completing several subscale missions to make that a possibility. So what is a raccoon? What is a rocket balloon? Um, how do we do that? So first, the balloon uh, lofts a rocket to a high altitude. Um, there it is launched. Um, this requires a lot of um, avionics control, um, you know, detecting what that al altitude is, orienting the rocket, etc. The pros is lower drag, uh, allows smocker, smaller rockets to have larger performances. Um, the cons is there is mass limitations and the uh, balloon has sort of an unpredictable drift. So we're tackling those challenges, finding ways to make this possibility, and it's an interesting problem. So like I said, we went out to the desert and we tried HAPSIS-1 uh, this past spring. Unfortunately, there was a failure in that design and we did learn a lot from it. Um, we still managed to complete a suspended launch. We still managed to inflate a balloon. We learned about how it is that we go about um, solving these problems. And we also learned how to overcome failure. And so that was a great learning lesson for the team. We still had a lot of fun out there and we got to do some other cool projects, which I'll talk about later. Additionally, here is a high suit balloon launch that we did. Uh, 27 kilometers high. Um, we were communicating with FAA. Um, we were also, we had to recover this balloon. It flew actually over the Indiana State Line into Ohio. But there you can see um, the curvature of the Earth and also the dark sky of space. 
that we were able to achieve uh, with just a high altitude balloon. So now we want to take that a step further and attach a rocket vehicle to that. So some of the teams that we have under Hapsis, uh, first is the launch structure. It's responsible for um, holding the rocket as it is suspended by the balloon. Um, also withstanding the forces that that system may encounter, making sure the avionics are recovered safely and hoisting all the different systems that go on Hapsis. Flight Systems uh, works on the high altitude balloon recovery, particularly with uh, detaching the launch structure from the balloon or popping the balloon, making sure that we're compliant with FAA regulations and also recovering our system safely. Our avionics team uh, designs, manages the hardware and software infrastructure that communicates with the ground station. They have things like um, uh, custom avionics. We're doing some SRAD work, student research and designed avionics. Uh, they also do communications. We're working on some radio systems over the horizon communications, uh, satellite systems, et cetera. We're really branching out here. It's um, it's definitely a unique problem um, being able to communicate and control a balloon like this. So we have a lot of avionics problems that we're trying to overcome. Additionally, we have our ballooning team. They focus on everything involved with the outs to um, weather balloons. This includes um, tie-off, inflation, uh, how we deploy the balloon. We're investigating new methods to deploy the balloon um, that put less of a stress on the system during deployment. Our payload team is working to ensure that the electronics are going to survive the temperature and altitude conditions that we're putting them under. Additionally, um, interfacing with the other systems that avionics needs to connect to, whether that be transmitting to the ground or um, controlling the launch structure. And then finally, um, Icarus team is also cooperating with Hapsis um, with providing rockets and possibly working on um, coal gas thruster control of a balloon for orientation purposes, which is a technology we're researching. So like I said, some of the upcoming technical objectives is that integrated high altitude balloon test, which we're performing in Indiana, or at least planning to, working with the FAA on that. Um, and then the development of Hapsis 2, which will include over the, over the, over the horizon comms, uh, increase in launch structure size and a bigger, uh, higher performing rocket. Okay, now I'll move to the Icarus program, uh, another side of our club. The Icarus program is more focused on student research in developed technologies, or SRAD. Uh, our goal is to make rocket flight more accessible, particularly in the state of Indiana. So our, um, our task is to make um, more launches, launch more often, um, but also to create more complex designs. Um, this includes the development of our own propulsion systems, our own cold gas thruster RCS systems, and additionally our own rocket airframes. So here is a video of our Icarus, um, one of our Icarus launches, the Stratos-1 rocket, which was a high-performing sounding rocket. This rocket traveled to over Mach 2.5 and had an out, um, out, apogee of 25,000 feet, despite a failure at the very beginning of flight where the nose cone unfortunately separated early. Um, that just goes to show the power of an O motor rocket. This was another one of the projects we did out at Friends of Amateur Rocketry uh, this, this at the end of last year. So very cool opportunity we had to go out there and launch a rocket. It was quite exciting. Moving on to our Icarus subteams, um, we have various subteams that work on different projects throughout the Icarus program. Firstly, is Airframe. Uh, they do everything related to rockets. They design, simulate, manufacture, and assemble rockets. And this year, they're working on um, uh, the operation and completion of the Theseus architecture, which I'll go into in a minute, as well as the design of a two-stage rocket, um, which will be um, and, and also the support of HAPS missions. Propulsion team is working to develop a solid rocket motor. They are planning to cast that motor at Zucro Labs, um, working with, we have a good partnership with Zucro Labs as um, a student work here at Purdue. And we're looking to cast a solid rocket motor, hot fire that this semester, and then hopefully integrate that into a rocket and launch it next semester. The Guidance Navigation and Control Team, or GNC, is working to develop a reaction control system for uh, future rockets. Um, they have their Zephyrus demonstrator, which um, has been in development for a long time. But this semester, I think we're going to focus on the development of a flight weight model, uh, maybe downscaling that design to only one degree of freedom, a roll control, um, maybe upscaling that for, for future designs. In the, um, but really just trying to proof out that technology, say that we can control a rockets during flight, uh, pushing towards future milestones. 
and our rocket avionics is part of our avionics team. Um, this is also part of Icarus, uh, uh, however, because they are creating the avionics for our rocket projects. Um, this, is, this is for determining apogee, deploying separation, uh, recovery, uh, GPS, all of those different things are contained within our rocket avionics. And so we need to make sure that all our rockets are um, deployed and recovered safely. So a little bit more detail about our Icarus program. First of all is our Theseus uh, um, rocket airframe architecture. This is something we've been developing for a little while now, a little over a year, and it is a modular, reusable, interchangeable rocket, which we plan to launch in Indiana. It is manufactured out of aluminum here in Bechtel Innovation and Design Center at Purdue, and we are planning to launch this several times throughout the year. Um, Icarus Alpha is going to be just a validation of this airframe. Uh, beta may include a prototype stage separator, mechanical stage separator we're working on, and then Gamma would include um, our own propulsion cast motor. We're also working towards a new design this year. We're going to be doing a lot of on-paper design for a rocket um, architecture we're calling Janus, which will be a two-stage rocket, which will be building off this Theseus architecture, uh, adapting it for two-stage. So a little bit about our propulsion sub-team. Um, their goal is to design and test propulsion systems for flight on orbital rockets. So they do everything from mixing propellant to motor casting to hot fires. This is a previous hot fire from a couple years ago. Now, this engine was a hybrid engine. Um, however, this semester we're focused mainly on solids development. We want to get our solid rocket motors up and running. And so to do that, we're working on our um, how we're casting our grains, uh, what grains we're using, um, researching the best way to complete that, and also doing all the analysis required. A little bit more detail here. These are some of the different projects within the propulsion team. Uh, we have the motor, ca uh, motor casing slash um, pressure transducer integration. We have propellant casting. We have the test stand, which is going to need a lot of development this semester. And finally, the igniter um, for igniting the solid propellant. So um, the, the goals for the um, propulsion sub team is solid ro uh, rocket motor development. We're calling this motor the jalapeno motor. It is planned, planning to be flown on Theseus. Uh, there'll be some development going on this fall. Additionally, um, there may be future work on a hybrid system returning to that design that we've previously done um, if it is in demand. Now, our GNC team, or Guidance Navigation and Control team, is working on um, their coal gas thruster systems, their RCS, Reaction Control Systems. Um, they are working to be able to control the attitude of a rocket. They're investigating this technology. They have been for a long time. And now we're looking to mechanically redesign this system to downscale it to the size of a rocket. And then um, maybe, you know, uh, we're also, in, in addition to the downscale and mechanical redesign, we will be working on the software development, uh, the control law associated. A lot of work needs to be done there. And finally, the rocket avionics. Here is an example of a um, avionics setup inside of a rocket airframe. You can see there's a lot of different parts here. Um, how we install that uh, can be, you know, complicated. Additionally, um, which parts we pick, um, which ones we have to design ourselves, PCB design, programming, testing, all that kind of stuff is included in our avionics team. So what's our vision really for the Icarus program is uh, we want to launch K through 12 or um, science experiment payloads in Indiana. Um, we've, we're working to partner with the AAE 418 microgravity flight experiment class, which is a class here at Purdue where students get the opportunity to design uh, microgravity flight experiments, either working with K through 12 students or uh, making them just as college students. So some of those payloads are going to fly on future uh, Virgin Galactic or Blue Origin flights and actually go into space and get microgravity time. But before that, we want to give them the opportunity to test um, their systems suborbitally in the atmosphere to understand how those accelerations um, will be affecting their system. So like I said, the upcoming milestones for Icarus is launch of Icarus Alpha. That will happen this fall and then following with Beta in the winter and then hopefully Icarus Gamma sometime next year. Additionally, the development, like I said, of the Janus architecture, this two-stage rocket will be happening throughout the year where there'll be design reviews associated. Okay, moving on to our systems engineering program. Systems engineering, what is it? Well, it is essentially how we go about solving our problems, how we break down 
our mission goals and um, ideas into real actionable requirements. And there's a lot of different steps included in that. Um, there is concept development, uh, there is uh, requirements development, there is verification validation. All of these terms, if you don't know what they are, you may have the opportunity to learn about them if you join the systems team. Systems engineering is a very valuable skill um, in industry because it's how we solve large, difficult, complex problems that are interdisciplinary. So our system engineers work to ensure the interfaces between our subsystems are going to succeed. They guide the teams in their design to ensure we have a quality of de delivered product. They ensure safety of our design. And it is also a great stepping stone for leadership because you get to learn about all the different teams uh, in our club, what they're doing and how their missions interact. Some of the technical objectives for systems this year is gonna be the support of operational objectives. This includes things like tests and launches, Additionally, mission planning and design reviews. Design reviews are a large part of what we do here through Orbital. We want to make sure that our engineering work is the best it could possibly be. And so there are several types of different design reviews that we will um, be working on and developing throughout the year. Then we have the CONOPS development and mission scoping, things like launch location, flight profile, altitude goals, and required technology. These are all um, things that need to be scoped out and thought of before we go out and attempt to tackle a mission. So some of that early mission design work is happening on the systems team. And then finally, requirements development and documentation. So our systems teams are broken up, uh, broken up into the two halves. Um, our Icarus systems team works to assist the Icarus teams and our Hapsis systems team works on our Hapsis projects. Okay, finally, I'll touch on our manufacturing program. Um, our manufacturing team works to model and machine parts that we need for our different projects. Um, this team will teach you how to use CNC machines and um, use CAM. We work out of the Bechtel Innovation and Design Center for all of our projects. All of our meetings happen there. So our students in the manufacturing team get the opportunity to get hands-on exper experience building um, these systems and also having great input on the design, ensuring that we are designing for manufacturability. Some of our technical objectives include the finishing of the TCS rockets, HAPSIS II prototyping, support of propulsion for their test stand and hot fire, and then the creation of the GNC flight weight model. Finally, our enterprise program. Um, we have two teams here, the treasury team and the outreach team. We're looking for anybody who's willing to get involved, reaching out to um, not only other organizations, but also companies, uh, getting securing things like sponsorships, uh, running um, event planning, um, uh, outreach in general, there's lots of different things that are contained under that, but we want to have members that are interested in really helping this organization grow and sustain itself. I'll end by showing a brief side of all of the different companies that our students have either gone on to work for or have interned at. Um, here at Purdue Orbital, uh, we believe that being a member of this club really is the stepping stone and first step in someone's career. Uh, we believe that you can build a career here and that the experiences that you learn and the technical skills that you gain will be the stepping stone to gain internships and then jobs. So here you can see many of the different companies in the aerospace industry that um, we have either worked, war, uh, worked with, had networking events with, or had our members work at. So lots of great opportunities there. If you are looking to get an internship, um, get hired, get great technical experience while you're still in college, Purdue Orbital is a great place to be. Okay, so how to apply. Um, firstly, I recommend that you visit purdueorbital.com. The QR code there is for that website. Then you can hit join Purdue Orbital and finally apply to Purdue Orbital. If you then fill out the form with your details and interested teams, we will be able to place you on a team. Now, I would recommend that anybody watching this try to fill out that form before um, Friday, August 30th. If not, we will still be accepting applications via that form for about a week or so after. And then after that, it's recommended that you just email us, porbital at purdue.edu, if you're interested in joining after that date. Uh, finally, I should note about the applications that they are not exclusionary. We accept everyone who applies to Purdue Orbital. However, we cannot guarantee your first pick of team. Um, teams are very competitive, especially our propulsion team. So if that team builds up, we cannot guarantee that there will be a spot on that team um, for you. However, there that's why we ask for your second and third choices so that we can find something that works best for you. If you're more interested in some other details about the teams, the website also includes a section for that. 
Um, also, more details about the projects. Again, this video could be used as reference for that. Finally, if you do want to set your application apart, um, if you are applying for a, a team that is more competitive, I recommend that you attach a portfolio or resume. However, that is optional, and I do not want to discourage anyone from applying. Uh, we want members to join Purdue Orbital. We are uh, seeking out new members, even if you have no technical experience or are a freshman or are just looking to get involved in Purdue Orbital. Finally, as far as our meeting times, we meet from 7 to 9 p.m. Mondays and Wednesdays in Bechtel Innovation and Design Center, or BIDC. Um, there will be more information sent out about the first meeting um, when you get your follow-up response email, which should happen sometime uh, next week. That would be the week of September 1st. All right, thank you for uh, watching this recorded call-out presentation. If there are any questions, please contact us either at porbital at purdue.edu or via our Instagram or other social media. We encourage you to check out more uh, information on our website. And here is an updated organization chart if you are interested in reaching out to any of the design leads of these teams. Thank you.